Hey, hey everyone, and a welcome in. It's a Monkey Mar. Before we get into today's long awaited video, please make sure you click that subscribe button, the bell for notifications, and of course, the like. Let's get into Letitia Stout's Family Tree Unfolds Part 10. And with that, let's get into today's video. All right, guys. So before I get into part 10 of Letitia Evil's Family Tree, let me get into this article and what do you guys think is going on with this? So there is really no new news on Letitia. She's probably, you know, undergoing her mental evaluation. We hope, hope by now. But let me just go over a couple of articles that I've combined because it should be up around this time where her evaluation should be over. So we've got Letitia Stouk's lawyers say mental com competency test to be completed soon. And this was around July 17th, 2020. But they say Letitia Stouk, who was charged with murder and the death of her 11-year-old stepson, Gannon Stouk, rest in peace, G-Man, will be moved to a state hospital in Pueblo to undergo an evaluation to determine whether she's competent to stand trial, according to KRDO, our partners in El Paso County. Now, I did a video back on a road trip with Letitia Stouk's new facility where they were going to bring her to Pueblo, and we were checking out the windows to see if Nutjob was going to try and use her escapee through the window. And... Um, if you want to have a look at that, go ahead and have a look. But that is definitely where they brought her. So when the evaluation was ordered in June of 2020, prosecutors asked the judge to have the competency test be tier one because of how much attention this case has with the judge agreeing with the statement. That meant it had to be completed in 21 days, but it was not to not discuss why she has not been evaluated yet so you're going on 21 days from then i mean we're going on two weeks i'm sorry two months the defense said stouts competency evaluation will be done next week or the following week under Colorado law, if a subject is found to be competent to stand trial, the case can proceed. If a subject is found not to be competent, they could be ordered to continue care under doctor's guidance, then return to court in 90 days for another hearing to determine competency. The process can be repeated indefinitely. So she can do this back and forth. I mean, if they find her cuckoo, then she could do this for years before she went to trial. A review date of Stouk's evaluation is set for August 7th. Well, 2020. Well, we know that didn't happen. To see if she has been to the state hospital. If the evaluation is completed by then, the next court date appearance is scheduled for September 8th. So did she get it done by August 7th? Is that where she's been? Because I have really heard nothing about her except for, of course, again, in Stouk's online memorial service, which was very beautiful. So <clears throat> let's get into the forensic services of the hospital they took her to, the Pueblo Mental Institution of Colorado. I actually looked to see if I could find her in there and I called, but because of HIPAA, they are not going to say anything, of course. All right, let's get into forensic services. Now, the Colorado Department of Human Services Office of Behavioral Health, OBH, provides evaluation, treatment, and other service to the forensic population statewide. Forensic clients are individuals who are diagnosed with mental health disorders involved in the criminal justice system and are either currently incarcerated or living in the community. In order to best serve this population, OBH's forensic services team works across all settings, including 
the mental health institutes, jails, and the community. Forensic services consist of five departments, court services, forensic community-based services, jail-based evaluation and restoration, forensic support team, and outpatient restoration services. These departments are responsible for coordinating, managing, responding to court orders for forensic evaluation and related forensic service statewide. So she is definitely in there through the forensics services considering that she's incarcerated for being charged with killing Gannon Stalk. So I don't know if this is the holdup or what the holdup is, but I really think and hope that we will find out on September 8th when she is back in court. Unless they prolong the court date because she has not finished her evaluation. So, what I'm curious to know, and I'm going to do a poll after this video, who thinks she is competent to stand trial and who thinks Letitia Evil is not competent to stand trial? All right, guys, that's all I wanted to get into with that. So let's go ahead and jump in to the confusing Letitia Stelk's family tree where I am stuck. Let the confusion begin. So some of you do like the tree. I get your emails. I get your comments. So we are going to have to work together because I've hit a snag and I have gotten so lost in this family tree that I honestly believe like I might be part of the family. So let me show you what I am working on and let me show you what I've done because I am 1000% convinced that a family member somewhere in this massive tree is in that area of Pensacola, Pace, Florida, Milton, Florida, because Letitia Evil doesn't come off to me like she has too many friends. I think it's about the family. So let's get into what I know, what I don't know, and what I need help with. I'll show you what I mean because we do know that Gannon is half Lumbee Indian because his mother Landon Bullard is in half she, she might be full Indian I'm not sure Landon's father's name is MacArthur so that's why you guys are probably confused with the obituary that chance that she has connection to the MacArthur because it's not chance so let's get back into Letitia Evil. And let me show you where I've been and who's who and where I'm stuck. So Letitia Evil, right here, psycho stepmother. Mother is Deborah Sue Locklear. Her father is Kenneth Ray Harden. Oops. They have this monster together. Deborah remarried to James Lowry. He already had Amy. And they had Dakota and Julie together and then Kenneth is remarried and he has kids with his new wife I'm pretty sure but we're gonna leave him completely out of the mix too yeah see I'm gonna this is gonna take forever all right so let's get into this confusion in this family tree that this is why I feel like I'm part of the family so I have everything but let me say this right now because a few of family members have contacted me you know maybe seven eight nine ten of them and I am going to respect their wishes. I do not believe that any connection to Pace, Florida or Milton is on Chance's side. I do not believe it's on Eugene's side. And I do not believe it has anything to do with Landon. But let me just show you what I've done. And this part we're going to probably going to have to speed up because it's a lot. I actually started doing Chance's side until a couple of the family members asked me to stop. We have him on the old tree, but I decided not to put him at all in this tree and respect his family's wishes. Because I do not think they had anything to do with her after the fact because she was not even in his obituary. And we know that Chance passed away. 
I even went as far as to dig into Gannon's mother's side of the family. And we know all this. Landon, Eugene, Gannon's parents. And then we've got Landon's parents, MacArthur Bullard and LaRonda Bullard. And then Veronica is the aunt, LaRonda's sister, who was married to the superintendent, Dan Strickland, that worked at this school where Letitia filed the complaint that her husband's ex-wife was harassing or whatever. But you know what? I'm not even going to touch the side of the family. Let's get back into Letitia Evil. So we all have those branches that go off, and I still have not turned Little Gannon's leaf over. And we've got his father who is um, has his own issues, but like I said earlier, I'm not going to even bring any of that up right now. But let's get into this real quick. And I'm going to do this and just show you what I have. And then I'm going to show you where I'm confused. But this part, I'm going to speed it up. In one of her, her, in her mother's obituary, it said that Deborah Sue Locklear and her husband, Stephen. Now, I'm going to show you in a moment where the confusion comes in with the Stephen and the Stevie Dial. Because Stevie Dial... In his obituary, he has passed away, was married to Adana Locklear, and they were living at the mother's address. I know you have to keep up. It is it is very confusing. So, do I think that's the same, same Stevie as Stephen Dial that Deborah Sue Locklear was married to? I don't know. With these family lines that I'm running into, I don't know. But he passed away. But when he passed away, it said his wife was Donna Locklear. But I'm going to show you where that doesn't mean anything. So then here is the connection to Brenda Acquard. We've got Deborah Sue Locklear, who is Letitia Psycho's mother. And this is where it gets scary. Whew. Let Deborah Sue's Locklear mother, Betty Lou Sampson, and her father is Milton Ray Locklear. Don't find too much on him. She passed away. But this is where it gets interesting. I was like, what is the connection to Brenda Acquard? So I'm going to show you the connection. Letitia Evil, her mother, Deborah Sue Locklear, her mother, Letitia's grandmother, Betty Lou Sampson. Betty Lou Sampson's mother is Bessie Scott Sampson. Her father is Chafin Sampson. Now, Chafin and Bessie is where I'm confused and I need some help. They have both passed, and I'm going to show you their obituary after I show you the tree so you see what I mean. They have Horace Sampson, Randy Allen Sampson, and I'm assuming his last name is Sampson, and they have Betty Lowe. Horace is married to Ivani, and then they have Horace Sampson, and they have a couple of other kids. Betty Lou also has Rachel. I do not know who Rachel's father is, but that is Deborah Sue Locklear's only sister by, like, the same mother. So now we were asking, well, how is Brenda Acquard connected? This is the connection. Betty Scott Sampson, who is Letitia Evil's great-grandmother, has a sister named Ruby Viola. And they have a whole bunch of siblings. This is not even most of them. I think eight sisters that preceded her in death. Her parents are Ida and John L. Scott. He passed away and Ida got remarried to an Alec Chelsea Locklear, but they didn't have any kids together. So here is the connection to Brenda Acquard. Bessie Scott Sampson and Ruby Viola Scott which is the first sister. Ruby Viola Scott is the mother to Brenda Acquard. Her husband was James Fred Sampson, and they have Brenda Acquard, Deborah Lowry, and Letitia Harding. James Fred Scott has a stepson, or I'm not sure exactly of the connection, named Willie Scott Chavis. And I haven't touched any of these leaves. So this is the woman who rented the car for Letitia Stelk out in Colorado and came back with her. 
right here. Her husband was Thomas the Quard. He has passed away. So here is where I'm stuck. I need to branch off of their children. But this is the connection to Florida. Randy Allen Sampson is the brother to Horace J. Sampson, the brother to Betty Lou Sampson, who is Letitia's great grandmother. Let me open up and show you what I have on them. I mean, like, I could totally be back in, like, the 1700s without a doubt. So Ivani and Horace have Horace Sampson Jr. They have other kids. I am working on that right now because I do not want to get it wrong. But Stevie Dio has children too. We got the Courtney O. Oxidine, Sarah Dio, Dylan Dio, and Ashley Dio. Now, is their mother Donna Locklear? I don't know. Haven't figured it out yet. But I want to know, Randy Allen, who is he? Is he living? Has he passed away? I have been looking for days and I can't figure it out. But this is the one who lives in Jacksonville, Florida. Now let me show you where the confusion comes in with him. I honestly think he is the key to the branch off to Florida. I don't know why. It's the generation that the kids would be, you know, Brenda Acquard's age, the mother's age, a little older than Letitia. So I need to go and look in on him. But then I found out you can't really go by the obituaries, and I'm going to show you what I mean. Bessie Scott Sampson, Chafin Sampson. Now, in her obituary, she is proceeded in death by her husband Chafin and a daughter Betty Lou, two sisters and eight brothers. And then down here, she is survived by a son and daughter-in-law, Horace and Ivani Sampson, five grandchildren, and we've got Deborah, Rachel, Karen, Horace Jr., and Randy. This is the Randy that I speak of. So, on her page, it's grandson. Here's Chafin, her husband. So, we've got surviving are his wife, Bessie of Lumberton, two sons, Horace Sampson of Lumberton, and Randy Allen of Jacksonville. So why is it Randy Allen? Is it not Randy Allen Sampson? Like, I am so confused of him. Lives in Jacksonville, Florida. Grandchildren, Deborah, who is Letitia Evil's mom, Karen, Horace Jr., Christopher, Brooke, Camera, Cameron, and Rachel. Nine great-grandchildren and two great-great-children. They had really big families. But then I thought, how is it he passed away in Jacksonville? Chafin Sampson, 85, of Jacksonville, formerly of Lumberton. So Chafin went to Jacksonville as well. Then I start to think, huh, let me show you. So let's go over to Bessie Scott Sampson. And remember, she's the great-grandmother to Letitia Evil. She has a huge family, a lot of children. So then I started to think, hmm, and then I saw this. Bessie Sampson, let's see if we can get the record. Okay, well, it says that Bessie and Chafin divorced on August 28th, 1967. So she was born in 1920. So she would have been 47. So they got divorced. So I don't know if they got back together at the end or when they got what happened or when he went to Florida. But him and Randy Allen. I don't know if it's Randy Allen Sampson. I don't know if it's just Randy Allen. I do not know why in her obituary he's the grandson unless it's a typo and why he is Chafin's son. So you see where I'm confused, and it's on Randy Allen. Then I started to look for him, find the connection with Randy Allen anywhere. 
So I am going to keep digging. But if any of you know or you have an idea, drop me an email. And what else did I want to... Oh, one more thing. Hang on. I get a little nosy and... The whole thing with Betty Lou Sampson and Chafin and him being from Jacksonville made me go, hmm. So I start looking for Betty Lou, who is Letitia Evil's great, great grandma that was married to Chafin and they got divorced. So let me show you an address where Betty Lou lived. I am going to, of course, hide the address, but let me show you. 15 blank blank Jack's Drive, Apartment A, Tallahassee, Florida. So they had her living there in 2013 till current, but we know that she passed away at the age of 96. And she was in Lumberton, or she was buried in Lumberton. I know she was buried there, but I'm not sure if she passed away there or if she actually passed away in Tallahassee did her and Chafin get back together all of these questions I do not know but let's jump back over to Letitia Evil's mother's address because now we are getting closer to Pensacola area Pace area Milton area and somewhere around there is where or the person or the family member that Letitia Stalk was something's there something she did not just pick out that area of the world to dispose of poor Gannon's body so let's jump over to Deborah S. Locklear's address because there's a name there that I can't seem to figure out the connection unless it's Donna Locklear's brother of course I am going to block out the the house number but most of you that follow the Letitia Evil stepmom monster case know where the mother lives but I'm gonna be respectful but forget about the address Living in the house, and this is the only part I want to get at, is Deborah Locklear, Gregory F. Locklear, and Dakota Lowry. We know Dakota. We know who Deborah is. Carolyn Hunt, I think, is confused in the mix. Then we got a Gregory F. I mean, Foster Locklear, and a Heather Locklear, who is. Gregory F. Locklear. So I go investigating. Now the reason why it takes me a while to come out with part 8, 9, 10, 3, 4, 5, because there's a lot of work involved. And just to find out Gregory Foster's deal, the one who lives at Letitia Evil's mother's address, this is Gregory Foster, the one who's living at the address. I wanted to see if maybe Donna Locklear was the sister. I can't find the sister Donna Locklear. I found Shondell, Patrick, and Natisha. I found his parents. I found his parents' parents, their siblings, great-grandparents, and the list goes on. So let me show you what I keep talking about with the Stevie dial and the Stephen dial because a Stephen and a Donna also live at Letitia mom's address. Now, Stevie passed away, but there's a Donna that still lives there. All right, let's go ahead and go over these last two obituaries, and then I'm going to wrap up the video. So on the left, we've got Letitia Evil's mother's mom, Betty Lou Sampson. And I am just going to go over who she survived by. So, her two daughters, Deborah Sue Locklear and her husband Stephen, both of Pembroke, and Rachel Sampson Lewis of Lumberton, her mother Bessie Scott Sampson of The Home, her father Chafin Sampson of Jacksonville, a brother Horace of Lumberton, and five grandchildren, 
a great grandchild and a special friend, Plumber Hunt Jr. No mention of Randy, the other brother. So let's look at Stevie Dial's obituary. We've got 50 of 701 Normal Street, died Saturday, July 21st, 2012, survived by his wife, Donna Locklear, son Dylan, daughters Courtney Oxidine, Sarah, and Ashley, mother Dale, sister Donna, a grandchild. So he's got a sister named Donna and a wife named Donna. I am going to end this video by showing you the actual tree, how many branches we have in the tree, and what I am going to work on because I really want to find that connection to Pensacola, Florida. So here we go, guys. All right, so we start off with Letitia Evil. We go branch into her mother. I mean, look how big this family is. Go into Stevie Dial, his children, his sister, her sister's husband. I have not looked into who their kids are, but I know they have one. Maybe a couple. And then, if I wanted to build up there, I could build a mountain. Let's get back into her mother. And then we've got Horace's family, who is Betty Lou Sampson's brother. And then we could go into Ivani and Horace's family. And then here's Randy Allen Sampson. The mysterious one. And then we come into Horace's wife, Ivani Jacobs' family. And she comes from a big family with lots of brothers and sisters. That's a lot of kids. The parents, James Earl Sampson and Eva Mae Sampson's children. Horace Sampson Jr. to Horace. And they have other kids. Do they? I'm not sure. I'm going to have to look into that. But I do have a feeling that we are going to start crossing into lines where, like the anonymous Lumby detective told me, that she is married to her ninth cousin. And before this marriage, I'm pretty sure she was married to her seventh cousin. And the elders know the bloodlines and who you can and cannot mix the blood with. All right, guys, I am going to be working on Bessie Scott, Bessie Scott's immediate family. I am going to see if I can find another connection to Florida through her. And I will come out with a part 10.5 or maybe I'll just make it in a part 11. I also want to, of course, figure out who Deborah Locklear's husband Stephen was. And who is that Gregory F. Foster? Hmm. All right, guys. I want to thank you all for coming in. And thank you for watching. Please like or dislike whichever you prefer and uh, subscribe. Everyone stay safe from COVID. Stay uh, vigilant and have a good day or a good night wherever you are in the world. And I am out.